right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Bernadette Bose. Known as a ball of fire, Bernadette Bose is a renowned business and success coach, speaker, author, and CEO of Ball of Fire Coaching, who uses her decades of corporate insight combined with her entrepreneurial focus to help powerhouse female business owners cultivate the mindset, talents, and tools needed to create riches in their career and life. Bernadette, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Michael. It's nice to be here. Thank you. I love your energy. This is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> awesome. It is. It is. Yeah, we're recording this on Friday morning, and it's a, it's a gorgeous one here, at least. So let's get started here. What's the question number one? Why did you become a coach, Bernadette? Well, honestly, after leaving corporate and starting my own consulting practice, I realized in the first, I would say about 12 to 15 months that most of the business owners and corporate professionals I was working with, they actually needed more help with why they were doing what they were doing as opposed to how they were doing or how they needed to be doing something. So all of a sudden I thought to myself, okay, I want to give control over to them. And trust me, when I say at the time I was a major control freak, <laughs> but I wanted to give control over to them so they could identify for themselves through, you know, coaching, inquisitive questioning, deep dive evaluation, what, what it is that they wanted, why they wanted it, and also how they needed to go about achieving it. Mm -hmm. So that was really what kind of steered me even from consulting into coaching. And I would say even to this day, I'm a, like a hybrid. I'm a blend of, you know, a coach consultant, but I really lean on the coaching side when it comes to allowing them to, you know, allowing the client to identify and work toward the answers they need, the solutions that they need, so forth and so on. Yeah. Okay. Great. That makes sense. I think, yeah, the, the line between coaching and consulting can be gray sometimes. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Uh, awesome. So question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? Well, I would have to say, and this actually kind of started percolating over the last, I would about four or five months. I was recognizing that I wasn't practicing what I was preaching when it came to, you know, what I was telling my clients that they needed to do in order to really optimize and, and build the type of business or have the career that they wanted. So I really kind of had to step back and take a look at, all right, so, you know, how am I building my own business and how am I getting the successes that I'm getting, but at the same time, addressing the, the, I hate the word failure. I prefer like misstep, <laughs> but you know, how was I addressing those things? And I looked at it and I, I saw that I was trying to wear myself so thin. There's so many different strategies, so many different platforms, so many different ways one can go about building a business. And I had fallen prey to, you know, trying all of them, you know, and I've been doing this for about 12 years mm -hmm. and I would ebb and flow from getting, you know, kind of really wide to really narrow. But I found myself in the past year and a half, maybe with everything that had been going on, and everybody pivoting to online and, you know, what that meant to what our businesses were looking like. I found myself falling victim to trying to hit all of those levers of all the strategies and opportunities and platforms and, and things people were doing. And I, I kind of had to stop myself, which then I said to myself, well, how can I go and say one thing to my clients and then do something differently and vice versa? So I started to really get my clients to almost retract and, and just get really narrow and deep into what it is that they wanted to be doing and how they were going to go about doing it. Because I was also seeing that the results were slow if you're trying to do too much. And I, you know, right now I just see that there are so many out there touting all of these different strategies and that's all fine and good. But it, when you're in a certain place of your business, you need to be really conscious and very astute to what, where you need to be focused on. So I would say that that's one thing, but I'll be honest with you, Michael, I then kind of really had a, a burr stick to me when I heard a statistic about six months ago that 90% of business owners earn under a hundred thousand dollars, 90% of business owners earn under, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And 
the average were between like three and seven years that they had been in business and they were still hitting that, that ceiling of a hundred thousand wow. dollars. Wow. And that's also what kind of said to me, all right, then I wasn't in that category, knock on wood, blessed, <laughs> fortunate. At the same time though, I, based on the fact that I was wide myself and spread thin, I had to say, uh, you know, and I had to pull back myself to kind of support my clients that I do work with those that are trying to get into six figures, but predominantly those that are working into the seven figures, eight and above. Yep. And, uh, but I ha- all of a sudden found a passion to help those that were hitting those ceilings and wanting to kind of start practicing what I preached mm-hmm. and follow and almost as if I was letting them in the back door and the way I was building my business is what I wanted them to also mirror so they could see that they could get those small successes that lead to big results. Love it. That's great. Good stuff. Question number three, how do you find your clients? Great question. Great question. <laughs> well, and I'm sure right now it might seem like it's a common response to say, well, we have to be online because we don't have an opportunity to be face to face and we don't have an opportunity to be networking locally, let alone globally. Mm-hmm. And I would say I have a really sweet spot where I do get a good amount of referral business. Because like I said, I've been doing this for 12 years on my own. And I've always maintained nurturing that, that base. So I'm blessed to say that there's a lot of referrals, but quite honestly, with everybody online and with all the, you know, the, what I'll call noise out Mm -hmm. there of all these other wonderful coaches and consultants and, you know, people doing similar work, it, you know, you get, you have to get creative. Mm -hmm. So I would say that I've really been working hard on, again, narrow and deep Mm -hmm. identifying you know, what I call my core hundred mm-hmm. of those individuals that I would love to work with and that I, I know I can, I can help and I can serve and I can really support in their journey mm-hmm. and just kind of reaching out and actually getting personal mm-hmm. that might, you know, start with emails to kind of introduce myself, but then even using audio messages to kind of leave mm-hmm. on LinkedIn or leave, to, leave in their DM so they can kind of, you know, relate to you more. And sure. then of course, and then of course, you know, this is a wonderful means to be able to do video conferencing that we have nowadays. So I, I would say definitely through just nurturing relationships, relationship slow, building, yeah. slow, yeah, slow versus mass, mass. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. I like that answer. Question number four, <laughs> what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? How much time do we have? <laughs> As much time as you want to take to answer the question. No, 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 no. (laughs) Actually, (laughs) no, I would say what I had just mentioned in regards to rising above the noise. You know, obviously, obviously over the last 12, 15 months, 18 months, a good number of very smart, of very talented professionals, whether they were coming out of corporate into their own coaching practice or they had a coaching practice and now they were finding different unique ways Mm -hmm. Um, to showcase themselves online and, you know, out in the marketplace, I would say just rising above that. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, one of your questions was, you know, what makes you unique? Mm -hmm. And so it's finding that blue ocean. If I, you know, if I say it like that, finding that blue ocean to where even with all the noise out there, you can stand out from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Now I've been fortunate that I think fortunate I'll leave that up to you, but I've been fortunate that I have a couple of brands that are very, very catchy. So I had written a book called Shedding the Corporate Bitch, Shifting Mm -hmm. from Bitch to Rich in Life and Business. And that's my personal story. Mm -hmm. And that is also a podcast I have and a number of other pieces of assets that I have. And fortunately, that gets a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, rising above the noise is still challenging. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yet at the same time, if I pick the right spots to put those, you know, to put those messages and, and I don't want to say advertising, but put those messages out there helps, but it's, it's still getting FaceTime. It's still getting that visibility, I think is a, is a challenge, at least for me. Yeah. That's, I mean, that sounds like some form of branding and advertising. It's not a dirty word. You can say it. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. All right. Question number five, if you had a do-over. 
in your coaching business, what would that be? If I had a do over, because I don't have regrets. So it's like, I don't regret anything that's happened. And trust me, ugh, I should. Uh, but I, if I, if I really thought about it, I would have to say that periodically, even over the 12 years, but predominantly at the beginning, because I think a lot of, a lot of coaches slash business owners deal with it. But I, I guess I would say not trying to be everything to everyone. I love that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Let alone try to serve everyone because we know how, you know, how disastrous that can be. But yeah. I would say, yeah, not try not to be everything to everyone. Pick your spots of where you're the sweet spot of where I'm really good at and where I know I can help my, my clients and then just focus there. Love it. That's great. All right, Bernadette, here it is. The bonus question. You were waiting for it. <laughs> we were talking about this before we started recording. <laughs> what is one book that you would recommend all of your clients read? Oh, just one? Just one. It's all you get. <laughs> damn, damn. Uh, I would, I'm going to have to say Think and Grow Rich. Love it. Yeah, I'm going to have to say Think and Grow Rich. You're going to have to read it like t 10 times to really pick up the, the, the nuggets that are, in, that's in there. But I would say think and grow rich. Nice. I love yeah. it. I like that. Yeah. All right. Thank you uh, for that. Do you have anything that you would like to pitch or promote and where can people connect with you online? Online, they can connect with me at ballofirecoaching.com. They can also, I get a, a good many of people reaching out to me just straight through LinkedIn. So look for me, Bernadette Bowes at LinkedIn or Bernadette Bowes on Facebook. And what am I, uh, well, on May 17th, I have an upcoming goals to six figure riches challenge right. that will take someone step-by-step -step of the core five things you must have in place in your business and working on, on a daily basis in order to break that ceiling, whether it is six figures or seven figures or beyond. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. Of course, yeah, I like it. You're you're practicing what you, pe you what you preach there. It's very <laughs> it's very specific. Five core things. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. That's solid. All right, Bernadette Bose, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches podcast, and thank you to our audience for tuning in. We will see you all next time. Thanks, Bernadette. Thank you.